got the bigger upper out. So I'm learning about this gouging business. So there's a fine line between a lot of grinding and too deep. It makes it so much easier. It also helps a lot to knock all the slag off before you start grinding. made some progress in the smoker and the air compressor died. Ronnie's been building these geometric shapes. He won't tell me what they're for so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Gonna cut out these funny shaped things for the end there with my janky temporary circle cutter see how it works. This thing actually worked really well. Got a nice circle cut out. Now I just have to do the bottom part. Same as my cardboard template. So now the idea is that piece is going to go in here and close off that gap and then we'll need another one just the same, hopefully just the same, to go down here and close that off. Then this will be open for smoke to come through. I really have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of copying what I've seen online. You have a door here, build your fire in there. Smoke comes through, cross your food, grate in here for whatever you want to smoke. Comes through and then there's a chimney here. Yeah. Pretty simple, but hopefully it works. Well that turned out pretty well. My word. Well that turned out pretty good fits nice in there. So now I just need another one like it for the bottom. Okay, got the other plate tacked in there. Now you can kind of see a little better how it works. Put the fire in there. Smoke comes up through here. Right, just gotta get them welded in. I've been working on the door here. So this is gonna get welded in that opening. And then this is a little bit larger. I'm gonna have hinges here. Figure put a latch over there. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, but let's see if it works. Circle burner thing. Don't know what I would do without it. <laughs> I've got so many circles now. Got my hinges welded on the door here. Flip this thing upside down so that I can weld on it. The other guys put tin up in this wall this morning. We found it on the scrap pile, so I we protect the insulation a little bit. I again have a mess to clean up. I got my airflow draft door thingy made. I warped the door a little bit, so I'm gonna have to straighten that out. I have my hinges for the lid cut out and made. So I'm going to put some strips around the outside of the door to seal off the crack because, I mean, it's not going to fit perfect. The plasma has a kerf. I'm going to put the, one, the two strips and the ends on the door and then put it on the drum and try and get my hinges welded on. I don't know if you can see, the rotor bent out a little bit. This is after I hammered on it. I couldn't get it quite straight. I might be able to if I hammered on it for a while yet. I think I'm going to call that about good enough. Okay, I've got all these strips on, covering it up. It's not perfect. There's a major gap in this corner for some reason. I'm going to have to work that out. I think that corner too has a bit of a gap. The rest of it's not too bad. Got the handle put on here. I'm gonna make some kind of counterweight mechanism because this thing is ridiculously heavy. These are just bent pieces stuck in the end of a piece of pipe. Actually, this is pipe from the combine, from the railing from one of Walgreens combines. They 
I don't know, something with how the ladder is, they got rid of it in the spring. But we're using combine parts, so I cut two chunks out of there, welded them together. It's not fixed, so when you pick it up, it turns. I don't know, I've seen, I've seen other people do it like that, so just to make it a little easier to open. I probably should have kept these back a little bit further because I had to notch my strip around them. Or if I wouldn't have put such a big weld in front of it, that would have helped too. It's been raining all morning, so we're not going to be cutting for at least a couple days. But I've made some progress on the counterweight system for the smoker. It looks a little crude, mostly because it is. But the idea is, the door is the hardest to open right about here, because the weight is the furthest away from the hinge point. And as you keep going up, it gets closer and closer to in line vertically with the hinge point, so it's easier to open. So with my counterweight, right here, the counterweight is about the furthest away from this hinge point, so it's putting the most force on the door, and then as it goes up, it comes around and gets closer and closer to that hinge point. So that way when the door is up the whole way, you don't have to pull on it really hard to get it to come back down again. It's kind of a curve. So it should be, ideally it'd be about the same amount of force the whole way, up and down. As it is, it's a little bit more force to open it and to close it again than I'd like, but I can play with this geometry a little bit yet, and there's going to be half that much weight about on this side, and I'm going to put another whole doohickey on the other side to make it a little more even. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, I think I'm happy with the counterweight deal. Oh, that bolt's tight. That's why it's going hard. But you can pretty much do it with one finger. Both ways. I have this accelerator roll shaft. I think it's a little bit too heavy, so I'm not sure what I'm doing about that yet. But I was going to hang that back here, kind of between the two, and then I can go up and down. It's like this takes so long to make without a CNC. I've been working on prettying up my links and things, rounding over corners and whatnot. And I moved this down two holes. So, when it's up, it brings the bucket closer to the drum. And I think I hit the sweet spot. Effortless. So satisfying. Again, water jet or CNC plasma would make quick work of this. Now without extra bits of metal sticking all over the place. This piece isn't quite big enough. Now it is. And no one will ever know. This is how you make multiple of the same part without a CNC table. Make one part, and then clamp the other one, rough cut, in the vise behind it. I used bolts to align them. Then you take the grinder and grind it down until it's the same size. And about five hours of grinding later, you have two parts that are nearly identical. Before I tell you the story, the moral is, when you're figuring out the geometry for these arms, use the weight for testing that you're going to that you're planning on using for the actual final thing. So I built these arms based off the weight of this bucket and got it all to work nicely with that. But since it's a combine themed smoker, we decided to use this accelerator roll out of a cleaner combine and it's a little too heavy. So it had these giant chunks of metal welded in the ends with shafts coming out and so I cut the shafts off and it was still too heavy. So to get those out they were inset a little bit with a weld around there and then there was like I don't know a couple plug welds around the outside so to get them out I had to torch or plasma cut all the plug welds out blow that bead of weld out and then I couldn't hammer it out I probably could have I don't know if I even could have if I would have kept
cutting to make sure I had everything, but I ended up, that one worked a lot better, but I cut chunks out of the outside and broke them off, and then I could hammer the big plug out, but now I have to recreate my pipe. I don't know how people stand pipe welding every day, but I am filling up like three quarter inch holes, so that probably affects it a little bit, stuff to weld it up, and then that's about the right weight. And I can fine tune it's maybe a hair light and I can fine tune it with those are new I'm not gonna use new ones but I can fine tune it with old accelerator lugs there we go wordy story check it out I got my accelerator roll mounted perfect I think I know what I need for grading and all that inside I'm gonna cut a hole in the end here, square hole, and I drew this, and then I made the thing over there, and I don't know where I went wrong, but my thing over there is like a half inch wider than this, so I'm glad I didn't cut that yet. So, this thing is going to get welded up in the end of that, where that rectangle is drawn, this way I guess, compared to the smoker, and then we're going to have, it won't go down in there, because it needs chopped anyway. So we're going to have two stacks on the thing just because why not? It makes it look like a truck a little bit. Um, yes, yeah, so these guys are the off cuts from cutting the top here. And they're like the perfect size to slip inside a piece of 5 inch exhaust pipe. So they're going to go here with a bolt in them and then there's going to be a handle coming out the top and they're going to act as dampers if all goes well okay progress update on the smoker I got my twin stack mount thing welded on good and proper we got steel expanded metal and angle so I can build the grates so I got that grate welded together I might have to put some cross members in it yet but that got that expanded metal cut out ready to weld on there got some angles tacked in here to hold the grate up got some cross members welded in the grate here stiffened it up quite a bit. I added this little latch over here that'll hold the grate in up position so that when you're doing charcoal you can raise that up and get into working your charcoal. And then lower it down and start cooking. It takes a long time to make stuff like this out of plate with a hand plasma. Check it out. Got a charcoal grate in now. I just need to make some way to adjust the height. I'm not sure quite what that's going to look like yet, but we'll figure it out. Okay, I built this thing for the charcoal grate. Got a bit of a handle down here, more of a just a hook point. And then there's this weird looking contraption with hooks welded onto the smoker. You can adjust the height of the charcoal grate. So I made this weird looking contraption. There's a handle or hook point down here, and there's a little tab thingies welded to the side of the smoker and you can adjust the height of the charcoal grate it's not perfect but I don't know it serves its intended purpose so now I just need to make another one for that side Right, this is the setup here for welding this thing up. This is the setup here for welding these things up. I finally made a jig for the second one. Just kind of two angles to keep them between, keep them square. I don't know. There we go. Second one done. Hmm. I've got my charcoal rack system done. I don't know. 
anything about cooking with charcoal. <laughs> I don't know what the distance needs to be. I don't know if this is too much adjustment. If you'll ever use this adjustment. But it's there, so. There you go. So this was Dwayne's dad's old welding trailer. So somehow I got to figure out how to put that on that in a decent manner. I've been working at trying to figure out where I'm positioning this thing in the trailer. So this brace here was welded in right there. I'm going to move it front to about here so that I can stick my firebox in between the frame rails a little bit front further. So then when you're standing over here, the edge of the cooking surface will be about there. So you can stand in front of the tire comfortably and still get to the whole cooking surface. I don't know. That's the plan. We'll see if it works out the way it does in my head. I got the cross member cut out and moved front a little bit. It's just tacked on for now. I took the spring hangers apart. These bolts are kind of worse. So gonna need some new ones of those. I also got this diamond grinding wheel from Milner Hoffen. Kind of expensive, but supposedly has lifetime warranty and should last quite a while. So we'll see how I like it. We got this thing kind of set on the trailer how it's gonna go. It needs slid front a little bit. I did a bunch of work to these spring hangers. The bolts that were in, the holes were kind of just torch cut poorly, so I did some welding and drilling on those. But that should all be good to go now. I need new bushings and pins for those. They're pretty war. But I got a exhaust pipe welded on here. Need to get the other one on yet. I've been working on the damper. Gonna have, yeah. It's not the prettiest but I'm not quite sure the right way to do it so it's gonna be how it is looks like quite the contraption from this side here's the setup for cutting this radius on my angles for the mounts so I got this jigged up that I have a center punch mark here I can put my uh, plasma cutter radius gauge in and then below that semicircle out. I have a little bit of a problem with this one. This needs to be, this circle needs to be up more because there's a rasp bar on the back, or a rasp bar mount in the back. It comes down too far and it just is not quite going to work. I picked it off the trailer and laid it down so I could weld these angles on for feet. So, got them tacked on and I'm going to set it back on the trailer and see if it lines up where I want it. Back on the trailer, I added some lifting hooks at the top here. I didn't quite get them at the right place. They should be back further. It hangs kind of like that. But... Not like that. I just bent this doohinky to fit in here. Weld that in to close that off. Yikes! much better. Well, it's time to get rid of my reference beam here for level. I'm probably missing something, but I think it's done. All it should need yet is a coat of paint.
All right, it's the next day. That thing is drying nicely, along with all these parts over here. I'm just splashing some gray paint on here quick, and we will be laughing, either from paint fumes or because we're eating chicken barbecue. Yeah. 